This is part 18 of WCF video series. In this video, we'll discuss throwing fault exceptions from a WCF service. This is continuation to part 17, so please watch part 17 from the WCF video series before proceeding with this video. A WCF service should be throwing a fault exception or fault exception of T instead of .NET exceptions and that's because of two reasons. Reason number one. An unhandled .NET exception will cause the communication channel between the client and the server to fault. Once the communication channel is in a faulted state, we cannot use the client proxy anymore. We will have to recreate the proxy from the scratch. We discussed this in detail in part 17 of the WCF video series. On the other hand, fault exceptions will not cause the communication channel to fault. Let's look at this in action. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So this is the same calculator service that we worked with in the previous session of this video series. So if denominator, so if this denominator is equal to 0, then let's throw divide by 0 exception. Divide by 0 exception is present in the system namespace. So let's go ahead and bring in system namespace. So divide by zero exception. So if denominator is zero, we are explicitly throwing divide by zero exception. And this is a .NET exception. Okay? And this exception is obviously unhandled within the WCF service. So let's go ahead and build our WCF service. So the service is running right now. Let's flip to the client. And again, this is the same client application that we worked with in the previous session. Let's update the service reference. So the service reference is being updated now. Let's go ahead and run the client application. So now let's pass in the numerator as 10 and denominator as 0. And if the denominator is 0, the service is going to throw an exception. And what, e what type of exception is the service throwing a .NET exception instead of fault exception? So as a result of this, what's going to happen? The communication channel between the client and the server is going to get into faulted state. Let's actually look at that in action. So once I click divide, you know, in a bit we should get divide by zero exception message attempted to divide by zero. And then if I try to use the client proxy, once again, look at this, what's going to happen? You know, we get an error. And what type of error we get? Look at this. We get communication object faulted exception. So the communication channel between the client and the server is in faulted state. We cannot use the same proxy class anymore. We'll have to recreate it from the scratch. Okay, so that is one of the downsides of throwing .NET exceptions instead of fault exceptions. So, what you know, if we don't want our communication channel to be faulted, then throw fault exceptions. Okay, so instead of throwing the .NET exception, we are going to throw a new fault exception. And then, you know, this fault exception constructor has got several overloaded versions. Let's specify a reason. So the reason is going to be, you know, denominator cannot be zero. And we can also specify a fault code. So let's specify a new fault code. And then let's use this constructor where we can specify, you know, the name for the fault code. And let's call this divide by zero fault. Now the service here is throwing a fault exception instead of a .NET exception. And let's see what's going to happen now. Let's close the service host that's already running. Let's rerun our service and host it. Let's close the client. And then let's update the service reference. And then let's run the client. Now let's go ahead and divide 10 by 0. Click divide. So denominator cannot be 0. Look at this. This is the reason that we have specified here. You know, the fault exception reason. 
and then we have here fault code as well now if we want to display this fault code within the client application now we can use this fault exception object so let's actually display fault code as well so fault exception dot there's a property called code and look at the return type it's returning fault code object and from that fault code we just want the name all right so that's the client application so let's go ahead and rerun the client application once again let's divide 10 by 0 so now we should get the fault code as well look at that you know fault code is divided by zero fault and that's the fault reason all right now look at this when I try to divide number 10 by 2 look at this we are using the same proxy we are not creating a new instance of the proxy class and look at this it still works okay so if we throw a fault exception from a WCF service then it's not going to fault the communication channel between the client and the server service so that's one of the reasons why a WCF service should be throwing fault exceptions instead of dotnet exceptions now what is going to happen when we throw a dotnet exception the WCF service is going to think that something very bad has happened and it's going to shut the communication channel down between the client and the WCF service alright and there is another reason why we should actually be throwing fault exceptions instead of dotnet exceptions that is if we want our WCF service to be interoperable then we should be throwing fault exceptions now here both our service and the client are dotnet so if we throw a dotnet exception then the client application is also a dotnet application so it's it can understand the dotnet exceptions but on the other hand if the client is a java application or some other technology then you know the client cannot understand these dotnet exception objects so if we want our WCF service to be interoperable then you know the service should be throwing fault exceptions instead of dotnet exceptions because dotnet exceptions are platform specific and can be only understood by a client that is also dotnet now we have discussed that a WCF service should be throwing either a fault exception or fault exception of T so what is this fault exception of T now this fault exception of T is going to allow us to create strongly typed SOAP false we'll discuss this in our next video session that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day